And we're back. It's all about the women this morning. We're moving straight to Mission. Remember, Mission is supported by Star Ghana Foundation with funding from the NIDA UK Aid and the EU. And we are talking election of women for district assembly elections. In studio, we have Rosemont Obeng, who is an aspirant at the Lashibi North electoral area. Also, Helen Kwanta is an aspirant of the Pobiman electoral area. And Kina Likimani is a member of the Women's Manifesto Coalition and also a member of Abantu for Development. Thanks for joining us, how ladies. You? How are you all doing? You look lovely, by the <laughs> way. Well. I'll start with you, Rosemond. Uh, tell us what your background is when it comes to district elections. Um, what I'll say is that in my electoral area, mm. I've been there for about 20 years and over. Right. And doing... Um, cleaning up exercise, I go door to door to get people involved, mm. personal relation with people. And you, when you come into the vicinity and you ask of me, everybody knows me mm. because of the impact I'm making in the area. Helen, how about you? How far have you gone when it comes to district assembly elections? Um, when it comes to my side, I have been part of the volunteers in my lecture area in the constituency or the district, I, I mm. might say. Mm. And I have been uh, working with another group called the Young Urban Women's Movement, which was formed in 2016. And I have about 1,000 young women that I chair at the moment in Greater Accra. So I have been part of um, mobilizing young women and youth precisely for developmental work. I've also been advocating for rights of women mm. in my um, electoral area. And Rosal. I'm also, yes. Mm -hmm. um, back to you. What made you decide, you know, to take up this mantle to contest the elections with men? With the experience I've had about maybe 12 years ago, mm. Looking at the men, they go and at the end you don't see any development going on and people keep on doing gatherings, they'll be complaining, complaining, complaining. Mm. So at least since women have a sympathy and the way they, they work towards things, I saw it to be that and even some of the men who are pushing me, mm. that Rosemary can do it, mm. go there. Just go and put in what you have so that we will see the development in the area. Ellen, I'll come back to you okay. for your thoughts on that one. Mm. But Kina, mm. uh, what has been your observation so far mm -hmm. on the district assembly elections? Well, um, Ghana, sir, we only have 4.3% women mm. representation at the assemblies. That's a decimal rate. I mean, that's just way below even the UN threshold of 30. We are not even anywhere close to parity. And why do you think that? that because is? there are structural and uh, cultural and financial reasons, mm. challenges that women face um, in running for positions. It's particularly um, worrying at the assembly level, I hate to use the word local, mm -hmm. <laughs> at the assembly level because the, the assemblies look after our communities. And it is, in fact, in the communities where we see the impact of women. Mm. So if you say that you only, we only have 4.3%, it's almost like saying we do not have women who can stand. Meanwhile, we have market women, we have mothers, we have young women, we right. have teachers, we have nurses. We have people who've been living in the same community and serving and working in it within that community, maybe as health staff, as teachers, for decades. So um, this situation in which we, um, we are falling, we lag behind global numbers in representation of women is a challenge. To, to our you know to our development to our democracy to our freedom and we need to address it yeah you did mention some cultural limitations mm -hmm. my telling us what some of those well are. first of all um, you know people tend to say that you know African culture respects women I don't know what they mean by that you don't mm -hmm. agree I, I because respect we are talking about systems mm. right so what would it look like? If you held up that respect to say our coat of arms, freedom of justice, if you respect women, then you assess us equally. We, we enter the arena of competition viewed the same way as a man, mm. right? But invariably, you know, we are 
we are viewed as women. We are in Ghana. We are second. Women are second class citizens. So, mm -hmm. for instance, when mm -hmm. a conflict arises, um, you will notice that the insults that are directed towards women politicians or women decision makers are gendered insults. Um, when a woman candidate, um, when a woman puts herself forward to stand, people want to know: Is she married? Is mm. she not married? Mm. How many men has she? Has she right. slept with? Mm -hmm. um, um, oh, oh, she's pretty, or she's not pretty enough. In which case, if mm -hmm. if she's too pretty, maybe she 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 slept her way into that position. Mm. Those kinds of sexual uh, they are harassment and innuendos make it difficult for women who know who know we have women who know they can do a lot for Ghana, but the arena of competition is is ex is is repressive and it's it's unfair to women right um so those are some of the cultural things i mean our, our whole language around womanhood and what women should be able to do um um makes it impossible makes it really difficult for women to come um, to the fore, even though in reality mm. Ghanaian women do a whole lot more than the society you know gives us credit for right right so so those are some of the cultural i mean i, I just um said a, a case where in the western region a woman wanted to stand in the last and um, the 2015 electoral election the assembly elections mm. and her husband had died three months prior she was going through widowhood rights they they pushed her into a room and locked the door what has wi widowhood rights got to do with uh, do your bit for Ghana's democracy. Those are two completely different things. But w what what do you think can be done to change these things? What is your organization, for instance, well, for doing to change these things? We need, we've, a bunch who has been working in this area for a very long time. Um, and because um, w the, the low numbers of women's representation is a systemic issue, mm. almost in order for us to address it, we have to address it with a technical solution and that's why we are talking about we are time we are pushing for the affirmative action um bill mm. um this is not a, when you say it, people are like oh you want to be like the west no this is, affirmative action for women is nothing new in ghana Kwame Kwame did it in 1960. so where ghana should have been comp based on where we started we shouldn't be having this conversation you mm. see so beyond, so we need technical, we need laws that bring parity and bring equality, like the affirmative action. But then we also need the society to change. Frankly, religious language makes women feel second down. Mm -hmm. um, the way, the, the family is the original unit of oppression for girls. So we need for parents, the father, the mother, the uncles, the guardians to treat girls differently. But first of all, we raise kids to be timid. So we need to ha be in a, we need to get to a place where we let our children be and express themselves. And then we need to just tone down the excessive socialization of women to be people who are utilities. Mm -hmm. You know, when a child, when, when a girl is complimented, it's always based on how useful you are to your family. Right. We, at a very young age, we are made to feel that we should be, you know, I call us, we are not the electrical company. I'm not here to put the lights out. I'm here as a woman, mm -hmm. as a human being to live my life. And so I shouldn't be told that I should act like a woman. I should act like Kina. And that is where freedom is. So we need not just differently how we, we how we, we allow women. You know, we let women sit in churches where they say some pretty awful stuff. Mm -hmm. On radio, on media, on TV, people speak very badly about women. When an issue of rape and defilement comes up, the way people, it's almost like they have to sensationalize it. <laughs> um, right. All of these things, you see, all of these things make it challenging for a Ghanaian woman by herself, even in her room, to, okay. have, to say that I'm going to stand. Let me come back to you, Helena. You've not been able to tell us, or we I haven't given you the opportunity yet, to tell us why you decided, you know, to contest the men in the upcoming elections. Mm -hmm. Can I, can I interject? <laughs> um, I, you, allow no, Helena, no, no, let, Helena, uh, let Helena, let Helena, no, no, let Helena. This is the second time you said contest let, the men. Mm. Elections in Ghana, as per our constitution, it's not a male preserve. Right. The question you should ask, Ask is what oh, so made so, her want so, to so she has to she yes. she she has yes. to be the one to answer okay. that. Yes, she has to be the one to answer that. <laughs> yes. Yes. Um, <laughs> yes, as Kina said, I don't think um elections or
positions are are for men mm. or for women. Right. I think it's about an individual who wants to drive the change. Mm. So if you have the passion to drive the change, it doesn't matter whether you're a man or you're a woman. Mm. So I have that passion. I don't I don't see myself as a woman. Right. I don't see myself as a man. I see mm. myself as a human being that I can do something for my community. So there is this passion that I have for community development. So I I the community I live that I have um, been there for 18 years, I have um, gotten the feedback from family, community members, um, some organizations I have worked with. That you this feel is, like you're up you for can the do it. Um, now, now, Kina has mentioned a couple of things that Abantu for Development is doing for women yes. like you. Have you felt the impact so far? Yes, so far so good. I've been through tra um, training mm. so with um some organization apart from Abantu have been through trainings with the Action Aid and mm -hmm. Theatre for Development, well, yeah. well, Awoda of Ghana. I've gone through so many capacity building trainings mm -hmm. with uh, NGOs. I have also trained mm -hmm. other women mm -hmm. and other youth and they've looked up to me and they are like, oh wow, this is good and you can do it. And I have assessed myself. I have asked my family, my husband, my parents, mm. and they all gave me the um, push that you can do it. So here I am. Rosemont, what do you think you're doing differently, you know, that uh, you should be voted for as against all of the people that you're contesting with? When you come into my community, that is Lashibi North, community 18, 19, 20, mm. most of the times when it comes to maybe gatherings, Maybe somebody having a problem in case of maybe funeral, weddings, on, and things. The way I'm able to mobilize people, mm -hmm. organize, and maybe tell people to contribute towards it. It is not myself. Say like your good works will we'll speak for you. So mm -hmm. they said, even within men, when you see a gathering where there, there are a lot of men over there, you mm -hmm. see this Monday. Right. Everywhere, so they said, Rosman, why, why don't you go? We'll support you. Go, right? You are fit for it for years. Mm. For years, so you think that you're up, you think that the now time is, is now. Time. You think that yeah. Kina, wrap up for us quickly. <laughs> um, in 30 seconds, uh, what posture do you think women that are contesting the ele this election should have? What kind of posture? Would I think you that the, the two candidates that are here mm. have the posture, they know their communities, they've been involved in their communities. Um, but most importantly, what I hear from the two of them is that they think that the work that they have done for their communities is strong enough, is good enough right. for them to then, based on what they have done, mm. to go forward. And this primarily is what I, is not primarily, is what um, sort of worries a lot of women. Mm. Like, do, have I done enough? And and, and you have to have confidence that you've done enough mm. because you have done enough. Right, right. So I think that the issue of whether, well, and I can imagine they, if they will win <laughs> and then they will go further because they have been involved. They are right. talking about it. They are not minimizing the impacts that they, okay. are, they have had. They are not coming in with empty words. They are not coming in with flashiness. They are coming in with history, with experience, with work in the community. And I All think right. that a lot of women looking at them should also be able to assess themselves. Have I, am, I, am, am I like this young woman? Right, am I Kina. like this woman? Right. And they will find that they right. are. Yes. Uh, Kina Liki, uh, Likimani mm. is a member of the Women's Manifesto Coalition and director at Udiko, also a member of Abantu for Development. Helena Kwanza is an aspirant of Pobiman Electoral Area, and Rosemont uh, Obeng is an aspirant of the Lashibi North Electoral Area. And they are gunning for some seats in their district assembly. So let's all support them. This has been mission and it's been supported by Star Ghana Foundation and funding from Danida, UK Aid and the EU. That's